This is 1792 foolproof. This whiskey was actually introduced in 2002 by Barton Brands as Ridgewood Reserve 1792. And of course the 1792 refers to the year that Kentucky officially became a US state. However, you can't use the terms wood and reserve in a whiskey label without getting the folks at Brown Foreman all riled up about their trademark on Woodford Reserve. I'll see you in court. So they sued Barton and won in 2004, and the name was officially changed to 1792 Ridgemont Reserve, which is way different. Like, how could you confuse those two? I'm not even sure people would be able to find it on a shelf at that point. In 2009, Sazerac bought Barton Brands including 1792 Ridgemont Reserve. And then they did what Sazerac does. They just improved the branding and simplified things to 1792. This brand's only 20 years old and it's already had more name changes than a mob informant in witness protection. And of course, Sazerac owns a lot of the most popular bourbon brands out there. Eagle Rare, Blanton's, Weller, like the list just goes on of super popular brands owned by Sazerac. But most of those are made at the Buffalo Trace Distillery. 1792, on the other hand, is made at the 1792 Barton Distillery, which is the oldest fully operating distillery in Bardstown, Kentucky. As far as the mash bill on this guy, 1792 has been pretty tight-lipped. All they say is that it's high rye, which means it probably has 15 to 25% rye. But these days, 1792 has a variety of limited releases, like Sweet Wheat, 12 Year, which is one of my favorites, and single barrel. Of course, today we're going to be trying the foolproof. The term foolproof means this is bottled at the exact same proof that it goes into the barrel. So this guy is barreled at 125 proof. As it ages, that proof goes up, but then they water it back down to 125 proof for bottling. And speaking of bottles, let's have a look at this one. On the front, foolproof, 1792. Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, 62.5% alcohol, 125 proof. On the back, foolproof. Bourbon insiders have long acknowledged that foolproof bourbon has a distinctively rich flavor. This bourbon has been bottled at its original 125 barrel entry proof, just as it was years ago when the barrels were were first filled. Strong and full of flavor, this bold bourbon boasts an incredibly deep and smoky taste, superbly balanced with sweet vanilla and notes of caramel. Distilled and bottled by Barton 1792 Distillery, Bardstown, Kentucky. So overall, not a ton of marketing hype here. You know, that unique bottle shape, that gold simplified logo on the front, a little bit of a story on the back about foolproof whiskey in general, but Overall, not a bad label. Now, this is supposedly seven to eight year old whiskey, but it doesn't say that on the bottle. So they could really put anything they want in here as far as age if it doesn't have an age statement on it, but that's the rumor. Let's look at those distiller's notes. Strong and full of flavor, this bold bourbon boasts an incredibly deep and smoky taste, superbly balanced with sweet vanilla and notes of caramel. Sweet, simple, to the point, I'm going to try this bottle and I'm gonna judge it on six different criteria. But before I do that, it always helps me out if you'll hit the like button on this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, we're continuing to try to take this up. We wanna do more and more of these reviews, which requires us to buy more and more bottles of whiskey. Your support in places like Patreon or channel memberships here on YouTube really help us to do that. Also, we have the best merch in the freaking whiskey tuber game. This horse collector shirt, is freaking fantastic. It's so soft and stretchy and wonderful. We have some male and female cuts on the website. We've got hats. As far as t-shirt designs go, there's nothing better out there in whiskey tuber land. Give those a try. If you find something better, you let me know and I'll buy those. Otherwise, consider going to brusel.com and checking out the merch. All right, that's enough talking. Let's get to the drinking. This is my blind review of 1792 foolproof. We're trying something different, a brand new Brusel 2.0 score. Like nobody really stacks their whiskeys up against each other like this. And so we're, we're having to learn and figure it out. So we've adjusted our scoring system and changed it up for the better. And I'm gonna kind of explain it as we go through. And the first difference is that I'm doing this blind. Like I do not know what whiskey I'm tasting. And that's the only real fair way to judge these. I don't know if it's expensive, like there is no marketing hype because I don't know what I'm tasting. And so I've had a bunch of samples poured here and I'm just going to pick one at random. We'll take the first one, number seven, lucky number seven right off the bat. And so we're gonna pour this, a good two ounce pour is all I have to score this. The first criteria is going to be aroma slash taste. We're just kind of lumping those in together because 
because they are so closely related. I'm gonna give it a score from zero to 100 this time because sometimes something's a six, but it may be a 6.5 or a 65 in this case. And that's a big difference between 65 and 69 and, and actually a 60. We wanted a little more range to really be able to differentiate between these. And this aroma slash taste is 50% of our overall Brusel score. Let's dig in. This has a classic bourbon aroma. It is just dark caramel, a little bit of oakiness, but it is just sweet, sweet caramel. Overall, a pretty solid aroma. It's got some proof to it. That is a that is a higher proof whiskey. I would say over 110, maybe 114 or so, maybe, maybe more than that. Definitely got a little bite to it. And it delivers on a lot of those kind of classic bourbon flavors. A lot of the things it was hinting at on the nose, it gives you on the palate. It hits you with oakiness up front, it dissipates into caramel, and then it comes back with kind of an oaky burn on the finish. Overall, a pretty good whiskey. I like the flavors on this one. It is what I'm looking for. I've got some sweetness, I've got some caramel. I like a little more fruitiness. I'm not getting a ton of fruit on this. I think maybe the oak and caramel are dominant on this guy. And so I'm going to give it a 70. We're trying to be a little more judgmental on these whiskeys, right? Anything 50 and above should be a good sipping whiskey. So when you give something a 70, that means that it's above average, like 50 should be average. And then we're gonna deduct if it's below average to me, or we're gonna give some points if it's above average. And the flavors on this are definitely above average, so it gets that 70. And the next criteria is complexity. How do those flavors evolve? Like what I'm looking for in a good whiskey is that it hits you with a lot of different things, and all of those things are spectacular. And the complexity on this one is pretty good. It's got some oakiness. Like I said, it evolves into kind of a sweet caramel. And then on the finish, I get a little bit of kind of an oaky bite at the end. It's not like overwhelmingly complex. Like it's not really hard. There's not a ton of subtle things in there for me to dig into. So it's not gonna be like upper echelon, but there is some evolution and complexity there. And again, the proof probably plays in its favor. I don't, again, don't know what the proof is, but it it's high. Like this has got some, some uh, alcohol in it for sure. I'm gonna give it a 60 on complexity. And the next criteria is finish. And this is gonna be 10% of the overall Brusel score, which technically, again, is a flavor component. And so we're getting up to 80% of the overall Brusel score is all flavor components. So the finish on this one is pleasant. Like I said, it's kind of that oaky bite on the end of it. It gives you a nice warming feeling because it obviously has that proof to do so. It lingers for a little while. So I would say the finish on this one is above average, but it's not something that just blows me away. I'm gonna give it a 65. And the next criteria is mouthfeel. And this is where we're really starting to tilt it a little bit toward bourbons that have a little proof. Although, as we saw with that Black Steel review, 94 proof, you can have a nice mouthfeel. So it's not so leaning proof, but it is easier to do when you've got a higher proof. And the mouthfeel on this one's nice. Like that proof is really smooth and buttery. As high a proof as it is, I'm not sure it's exceptional, but it is definitely above average. Like it's got a nice smooth velvety texture to it and I'm going to give it a 70. The next two criteria we're gonna look at are availability and value. And I'm gonna have to look and see what the whiskey is to be able to judge availability and value. Our whiskey that we are reviewing here, which you already know, cause you're watching a video about it, 1792 Foolproof, made by Barton. Pretty good whiskey. So the proof makes a whole lot of sense. I think that's at like 125 proof points. A little higher than I actually pegged it as. So it, it drank pretty hot, but I really thought it might be 114 to 120. Our next criteria is availability. I had to do a little Googling on this one. I may have to have them write that kind of stuff down so we have it. But 1792 full proof is a limited yearly release by Barton. It's not widely available, but I'm pretty sure you could find one if you wanted one. I don't think it's something that you're gonna have to go way out of your way or pay some huge secondary markup for. Maybe just a little bit of a convenience fee if somebody picked one up for you 
or if someone has one on their shelf. So I'm going to give its availability a 60. Our next criteria is value. This bottle is about $45 MSRP. I, I Googled it, that's what came up. So if you're paying a little more for it, around here in Alabama, everything's just slightly more. So you could probably pick one up on the secondary market with just a slight markup from that. So I don't think that it's going to be really expensive for you. And at that $45 or $50 range, I think this is a pretty solid value. Like you're getting a really nice kind of middle of the road, pleasant whiskey for that. So I'm going to give it a 75 as far as value goes. And that gives 1792 foolproof, a bruisal score of 67.25. Stay tuned, we'll be adding more each and every week. And you'll start to see as we do more of these reviews, we will just magically start reviewing and adding some of the ones we've already done because some of these are things that we've already reviewed. And so if I pull those, we won't shoot a video, they'll just show up on a list for the next video.